he run it and finished three and Z on it. It was sort of a spur of the moment thing to decide to sell it. And Aaron was there with his hand up. So what did I pay for the car? Let's just hope this goes faster on the track than it's going now. And instead of just asking the drivers what it was like to be out there, to actually be out there. So my very first race, I get dragged up to the referee's box. So I've always been into motorsport, either as a spectator or watching from the couch. From time to time, I wonder if I could do that. So instead of just going out and borrowing someone else's car, what I've decided to do, to give myself just a little bit of credibility, I bought my own race car. I wanted to work out how to get a race car set up. I wanted to work out what it costs, all of the rules, and bring everyone along on the journey, if you're interested. <laughs> oh, it's not all fun and games. Sometimes a bit of hard work. It's like a uh, fuel pump issue and no brakes. My uh, beautiful entire might stay clean for one more week. We were doing Des Gorge Tama chassis and we needed a few little bits and pieces so that's pretty much the reason why we bought it. Cliff Frost hat. Yeah. He run it and finished three and Z on it. We bought it for parts to get to complete this car, really wheels and all that sort of spears that we didn't have and stuff like that. And so brought it, got it up here. The stuff that we were taking off it wasn't really worth taking off it, ruining that car. I decided to steal it and start doing it up and tidying it up so I could run it for a, for a bit. This will be the, this is the engine out of the one that he's just working on at the moment. Um, it was sort of right place at the right time for Aaron because um, with all the lockdowns and stuff that we were having and no racing and stuff like that and me with so many other projects on the go it was sort of a spur of the moment thing to decide to sell it and Aaron was there with his hand up so that's what happened. So what did I pay for the car? It cost me 20k. And to be honest with you, it's a pretty damn fair deal from Everly Motorsport, which I'm very, very thankful for. Because I was getting to the point where I was quite keen on instead of just asking the drivers what it was like to be out there. Looking like a baddie, I show up and make them stop. Wanna know my name so badly. To actually be out there. So we made the trek all the way from Wellington up to Auckland to race in the King of the Park. So we got up to Waikaraka. We kind of tried to think we knew what we were doing, but we needed some help. <laughs> Huge thank you to the 1NZ Luke Brown Modified, because pretty much their entire team came over and helped us with some things on the car that really needed to be looked at before we went out on track. <laughs> I see another thing or two about a thing or two. Good 
good to see you around, mate. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for how long? Did an hour ago. Yeah. So that's good. Bolts? Yep. What, what are you saying bolts for? Well, this doesn't have a bolt on it currently, but it, it will soon. It doesn't have a bolt on it. Yep. Ready to race. So yeah. Dad and I, we're left to it while everyone else gets ready to race. Balaclava on. Now it's time to hop into the car. This is going to be the most ungraceful entry into a race car I think you'll ever see. Hence why I need to lose some weight. But I'm getting there. I'm almost there. I'm kind of there. And I'm there. So yeah, finally ready to go. Let's just, let's just get out there, let's do it. First time with my bum in the seat, Waikaraka Park. It's gonna be great. Get out the gate, it's a very tight turn. I don't know who I almost hit on the way out, but we'll, we'll let that one go. Cruised around parade laps, getting ready under yellow before the race starts, forming up. I just wanted to start from the back of it, which is exactly what I did. And I was pressing the brakes, pressing the brakes, pressing the brakes thinking they'll heat up soon and everything will be fine. Unfortunately, we got the green to go. Then I thought I'd put my foot on the brake and there was just absolutely nothing. I decided I'd persevere a little bit and try and stay out of everyone's way. Then I knew that the field was coming up on me. Because you can just sense it. <laughs> so we're going to turn three and then I'm coming out of turn four at Waikareka. And for whatever reason, I'm trying to stay on that pole line, but my car just, it just kept drifting out to the middle. And I was thinking, oh no. And then next minute, <laughs> everyone's coming flying past me. And I just, I didn't know what to do. My first instinct was to get back to the pole line. But of course, there are, there are cars there. So what do I do? I go and drive into, the four-time champ, the New Zealand champ, Jamie Foxx. And thankfully, it was just a glance, because I could have taken him out. So I went out there, for the very first set of races that I ever did. And man, I thought my heart was gonna beat out of my chest. I'm not joking. It was absolutely unbelievable. It's not just the, it's not just that I've gotta go out there and go fast. It's the fact that you know that everyone else is around you. The crowd is out there watching you. It's like, mm, boom, 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 boom. I forgot to breathe.
Was I disappointed? Quick thoughts? Pissed off. No brakes. I don't know, I probably let myself down. I didn't know what was required for the brakes. It was the problem that we already had and uh, Everly's made a, a bloody good attempt at fixing it. I even went round there, we bled the brakes, we made sure we had pedal, we did all of those sorts of things and then it just didn't work. So, hey, that's motor racing. So my very first race, I get dragged up to the referee's box. You go up there with your reps, to Crump took me up there. Just where I, where they were lapping me, and I didn't, I didn't pick a line. So Brad went on the outside, Jamie went on the inside. I seen Brad, so kind of panicked a little bit, went to the left, and was pretty damn close to um, taking out Jamie. I felt him rub my tyres, so yeah, any further it would have been a bit of a disaster. But no harm done. Lesson learnt. On to the next one. If I can fix the brakes. They told me what I needed to fix before the next race. But I pretty much already decided by that point, without brakes, there was going to be no next race on this trip. So we put the car on the trailer. We'll get it right at the next race, which was going to be the Wellington Champs, which we made it to, which was where I completed my very first race. Dungeon. I'm trying to get that funny face. Doing a close-up. Oh, what was that? No, this still looks good. Do you have to be an athlete to race in Speedway? Well, if I'm an example of that, definitely not. But I tell you what, to get out there and race, it's not an easy thing to do. In fact, all the preparation is not easy to do. So I kind of figured that if I could let my racing make a bit of a change in my lifestyle, the way that I'm eating and drinking and my fitness, it's got to be a good thing, right? I'm Emma, um, I am a personal trainer. Yeah, plain and simple, I'm really looking forward to help lead Aaron on his health and fitness journey. And we were to turn these around up that way. What I want to do is refit the seat to make my seating position a little bit better. Oh, that's the duck's nuts, look. Okay. Before we go racing, I will replace that. Yeah, see there's the cylinder oh, I was yeah. telling you about. So we need to put a fan in between the radiator and off the water pump. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna get me some lunch. <laughs> 